I'm Neil Matsumoto. I work in marketing for Panasonic. Uh, we are pleased to have probably one of the leading authorities on ProRes RAW. Um, we met Mike through Atomos, and you were a GH5 shooter, correct? Yeah. At the time. The... Yeah, so I started on the uh, Panasonic GH3, worked my way up to the GH4, and then now uh, shooting on the GH5 and the EVA 1. Okay. So Mike's going to do a, a presentation on the EVA 1 and ProRes workflow with Atomos recorders. So take it away, Mike. All right. Guys, thanks so much for coming to uh, check this out. My name is Mike Steadley, like Neil was saying, and uh, I'm do a little presentation for you guys on Panasonic uh, EVA 1 and shooting with ProRes RAW. Talk to you guys a little bit about the Atomos uh, products that you need in order to capture ProRes RAW and some tips and, tip, uh, tips and tricks for shooting with it. So uh, I'm going to show you guys a commercial project I put out uh, for Activision, Call of Duty, and Love Sack that I shot for Res Raw. So, going to kick things off with that, and then we'll jump into the presentation. Black Ops weapons free. Alright, so uh, that was a commercial spot I shot, uh, ProRes RAW, my first kind of big project with ProRes RAW. Um, gonna kind of take it back a little bit, talk to you guys a little bit about how I got my start. Uh, basically grew up riding mountain bikes and was a 12 time national mountain bike champion stunt rider. Uh, traveling around the globe, kind of filming commercial uh, projects and doing different videos for my sponsors and stuff like that. And then as social media came about, kind of got into making my own content for my sponsors. So a couple bike uh, slides for you guys here. You guys can kind of see me in action. But kind of as I grew out of uh, riding mountain bikes and moved more and more into digital content production, got into uh, doing my own filmmaking and uh, kind of transitioned from being the one in front of the lens to being behind the lens. So you guys can see here a couple pictures with uh, Eva. Uh, two setups here running it in the Moby Pro gimbal and then another one uh, on a shoulder rig here. And we'll talk to you guys about these shoots here in a little bit. Uh, as I mentioned before, I got my start with Panasonic back in the GH3 and GH4. I uh, was flying drones uh, with the GH4. That was kind of my uh, first camera that I really fell in love with Panasonic and really used uh, those exclusively. Now shoot on the GH5s a lot. And then uh, as soon as the EVA came out, got my hands on that. So a lot of experience using Panasonic product. And then from there, really got into starting my own production company and do a lot of action sports content, narrative, documentary work. Uh, I'm an editor at Drones, a multi-pilot, monthly rotor pilot magazine, and then do a lot of commercial work as well. So what that really means is in my camera setups, I'm really looking for something that's really versatile. So the Evo One's a kind of a perfect camera for me because, you know, one week I might be working out of a backpack with a small set of maybe two or three lenses and uh, keeping it really small. And then uh, the week after that, it could be scaling up with a 10-person crew, working with an agency and bringing in actors and doing a bigger project like that. So the EVA kind of fits the bill for me for kind of that uh, in-between where I can kind of move it from, you know, small productions where it might just be me or me and one other guy to uh, larger productions. So yeah, Panasonic uh, EVA 1 kind of fits the bill for doing that kind of wide variety of work that uh, I kind of find myself typically working in. Some of my favorite specs of the EVA are 5.7K sensor, which will give you 12 bit in 24 or 30 frames. When you're not shooting ProRes RAW, that's going to take that 5.7K image and scale it down into a 4K uh, deliverable. So what you'll have then is a little bit sharper image, but you won't be able to take advantage of that 5.7K uh, fully unless you're shooting ProRes RAW. You can then extract that full 5.7K and kind of move around and reframe and have that full um, you know, bit out of the sensor. But basically for just shooting directly to the memory card, you will get the 5.7K image scaled down to 4K, and it's a real beautiful image. Uh, 4K 60 at 10 bit for the new firmware update, uh, so that's really cool. Comes in an EF or a PL mount option. So what's really nice is if you have a lot of EF lenses like I do and do a lot of your work on that, 
and then get a project that's PL mount, you can, uh, in, or want to use some PL glass, you can either, um, what I'll normally do is I'll just rent a PL EVA 1 and then go from there. So electronic image stabilization and built-in ND filters are really handy to have. What's nice is the built-in NDs on these for the darkest one is, a, I believe, a 1.6, which is a little bit darker than some of the other cameras out there. So it's really nice if you're trying to get a really low aperture out in bright sunlight. So found that pretty handy. So I was kind of talking to you about my favorite specs when not supercharging it using ProRes RAW. But as I mentioned, you can get that full 5.7K when you're using an Atomos recorder and uh, be able to take that into uh, post and work with that. You can do the 4K 60 frames a second uh, using a 4 thirds crop. One thing that I found is really special is the 240 uh, at 2K. Really, really clean. I've been really happy with that. I use that all the time. Uh, definitely had me stop renting some of the bigger cameras that would shoot at those higher frame rates and just using the Evo when I wanted to get that slow motion. I will typically, don't tell any of my clients this, but if I have a 4K deliverable, I'll take that 2K, upscale it, and uh, nobody can tell the difference. It's that clean when you're shooting it into uh, ProRes RAW. So small form factor, intuitive dials, uh, touchscreen LCD. Um, so yeah, really good camera all around. Uh, one thing to note is that uh, Panasonic on their website has a whole series of LUTs which you can then take and apply to D-Log. So if you're using the GH5 or GH5S as B-Cam, you can basically go on there and uh, go through, pick out some LUTs. They've got a really good Rec. 709 conversion one so you can just quickly match the cameras and they've got a couple other creative ones to kind of just get you to a baseline to start, um, start your project off. That'll give you 14 stops of uh, dynamic range when using the EVA, and that will give you the uh, 12 stops when using the GH5. So a couple more uh, pictures of my setups here, just some of my uh, handheld setups. Um, but as I mentioned before, a really gim gimbal-friendly camera. The fact that you don't need to lug a bunch of V-mount batteries around uh, really gets me excited because a lot of the jobs that I do, I'm bringing the camera up a mountain or getting on a chairlift or riding an ATV or who knows what to get to location and not having to bring four V-mount batteries. You can basically do three of the batteries and get to shoot for you know sun up to sun down. So really excited on that, not having to bring those uh, extra batteries and worry about maybe bringing a generator or something like that. Um, yeah, so we'll kind of move on here. A couple more setups in the gimbal for you guys. Um, got a chance to fly this with the Icon A5 and hang this uh, camera out of the window of uh, this small little plane. So that was a fun uh, moment shooting with the EVA this summer and uh, shooting some ProRes RAW for those guys. So supercharging the EVA with the Atomos recorder, I'm going to walk you guys through the Atomos stuff and kind of what you need to kind of get up and running to shoot ProRes RAW. So basically, uh, you need the monitor, uh, which comes in three different flavors. You have the 19-inch Sumo monitor, a 7-inch monitor uh, called the Shogun, which will give you HDMI and SDI imports. You'll need to use the SDI uh, port to get the ProRes RAW out, and they now have a 5-inch monitor, which has a little adapter, and you can now record to the 5-inch monitor using an SDI uh, module that they uh, just released. I think that's slated to come out in uh, June. Not totally sure on that, but the 7 inch has kind of been my uh, go to monitor for recording the ProRes RAW. So, kind of just covered the slide in uh, my little bit of rambling on the last one there. But, like I said, 7 inch monitor, uh, they make a 19 inch monitor, and then they now also have a 5 inch monitor. So, the monitors are great, you can kind of use them with any film tool, and uh, it's a recorder and a monitor in one. 1500-nit uh, daylight viewable, which is really handy. The uh, LCD on the Panasonic, you definitely need to run a sun hood or use a viewfinder. If you use it on your own, you can't do handheld shots like nice and low, which I like to do. So being able to have a nice bright monitor is uh, definitely a plus for me. So jump the slide here. So focus tools that are built into the monitor, uh, you've got your regular focus peaking, you've got a two to one punch in, then you've got all your typical kind of exposure tools like uh, the zebras, you've got false color, you've got the vector scope, all that good stuff so you can really monitor your image, make sure you're uh, in check. 
What's one other thing that's really cool about the EVA that I like? They have a new Focus Square system on their uh, Focus uh, Assist. So the EVA has this uh, really cool squares. So instead of peaking, they have uh, three different sized squares. And as you rotate the Focus, you can see exactly what's in uh, Focus using their little Focus Squares. Uh, audio options for the recorder will give you all of the tracks on the EVA plus an additional two tracks when using the XLR uh, into the Shogun. So what you can do is basically have a whole bunch of different tracks that are going into the EVA and then those will come up into the uh, recorder. So you can plug in four XLR microphones, which is really handy. I do a lot of automotive work, so sometimes what I'll do is I'll put two wireless microphones in the back of cars and I'll have uh, be getting sound from the exhaust and those will come into wireless signals that will come into the recorder and then I'll do a shotgun microphone on the camera itself and then a stereo microphone so I really am getting four different options uh, for two cars so it's really handy way to get some kind of sound effects and some different audio uh, from what you might be filming so that's definitely pretty handy and then if you have a sound guy on top of that you're really just adding in all these different layers of uh, capture for your sound so reviewing footage, a sync. Oh, can you guys hear me? All right. So uh, reviewing footage on the Atomos monitor is a breeze because you can go through, use their slider, you can look at your clips, you can view back your 60 frames at 40 percent to be able to basically see what your slow mo clips are looking like. You can preview anything with uh, log HDR or LUTs to preview any looks. So you can go get those Vericam LUTs that I was talking about cue them into the monitor and take a look at those directly on your vlog footage. Uh, you can pause the clip at any moment, zoom into that with a two to one ratio, check your focus, which is really handy. You can tag your clips for uh, metadata and then for ProRes RAW, you can export that data and basically mark clips on, uh, on set. So this is really handy working with ProRes RAW. If you're working with an agency or your client, you can review a couple of the clips that you've shot, say, hey, do you like this take? Do you like that take? The ones that they say, you know, uh, we don't like that, you can mark as, an, uh, as a no-go. Or the ones that they really fall in love with, you can mark. So when you go back to the editing bay, you've got those already selected. And then you can really just kind of move through your edit pretty fast. It gives you a way to just get those clips into the timeline that you know the client's going to like and is already pre-approved. So ProRes RAW, we'll talk to you guys a little bit about that. Uh, we'll jump in here. Just want to point out some of the cameras that are also offering ProRes RAW. And one thing that's really stand out about Panasonic is the EVA is the only camera which is going to give you a 5.7K deliverable. Everything else right now you're capturing in 4K. So the EVA is kind of the breakout camera, in my opinion, in the group because you're getting that 5.7K uh, flavor. And that is uh, delivered in uh, 24 or 30 frames a second. So you would think the 5.7K RAW files would be absolutely massive, but uh, truth be told, they're really not that taxing. Most of my editing I'm doing on the go, editing on a, just a maxed out MacBook Pro. Uh, it's even a year behind. But I've got this cool chart here which shows you some of the data rates. You can take a look and look at the ProRes RAW HQ versus ProRes 422 HQ. What this little orange slider uh, is indicating is uh, the amount of capture, and it's based on how hard the camera is having to work to record certain data. So if you're in a very high dynamic range uh, situation, it might capture a little bit more information or it might capture a little bit less if it's a less contrasty uh, situation. Long and the short of it is though, uh, after shooting a lot of ProRes 422 HQ on the GH5 and the GH4, I really have not noticed a huge difference when jumping up to that 5.7K. I thought it was gonna be like buying copious amounts of hard drives having all this data and it was going to really just be taxing on uh, keeping up with the data management, but really uh, not a lot of difference for what you can gain in recording to ProRes RAW and all the benefits that you're going to get from it. So pretty simple, uh, you're going to record right to an SSD drive. Uh, GTEC makes some really good SSD drives. You can put them right into uh, a rated system that they make so you can instantly back it up. Also, the drives are so robust that you can edit right off the drive. So if you have a really quick turnaround, you can pull that drive out, leave the files in place, and just edit right off the drive. So uh, you can take that XLM uh, metadata that I was telling you about, look through, have the, everything right on the drive, and get right to it without having to back up anything. And then you know, maybe you get that first round of editing, 
done and then go to sleep and then you can do your backup then. So if you're on a critical deadline or, you know, I don't know about some of you guys, but I'll be finishing a shoot, not even finished packing up the C stands and the clients are asking me, hey, when are we going to have that uh, edit? And, uh, you know, you haven't even finished getting out the door. So it's really handy to be able to have that option for speed if you need it. So recording the SSD drives, ready edit, codec, and works right inside Final Cut Pro. They've also made adjustments now uh, to basically work in Premiere and DaVinci. I'm kind of a Final Cut guy, so I don't know too, too much about uh, working with it in the other programs. But for Final Cut, it really just works seamlessly. You don't have to worry about the computer slowing down and playback's a breeze. And uh, I'm rarely doing proxies, even on, a, on my MacBook when I'm traveling. So working right inside Final Cut, uh, I'm going to give you guys a couple of tips for basically maximizing and a few things to look at. Make sure you're not missing anything, but everything is going to import uh, seamlessly and work because it's an Apple codec. So you have uh, that as an advantage, that everything is going to communicate well. You'll be able to pull those clips right in and just start working with them right away. A couple of the tips that you want to make sure to be taking full advantage of the, all the colors and stuff that you can get out of the EVA is you want to make sure that you set your project to a wide gamut HDR. This is going to be found up in the color space settings up in the library. So you want to make sure that your entire library is set to wide gamut HDR. And then from there, when you create a new project, you want to make sure you're working in that Rec 2020 space. That's going to give you the full advantage of all the colors and all the information that ProRes RAW and the EVA is capturing uh, when you're on set. So a couple of clips that I shot, uh, just some over exposed tests that I wanted to uh, show you guys and then also talk to you guys a little bit about that 240 slow motion. Uh, so I have a couple clips that I just pulled from some random projects the other day. So some uh, 240 slow motion here. And then I believe right after this is a super overexposed clip and you can see how much information is still retained in there even then even though you've completely blown out the sky. Uh, kind of more high contrast sunset clip here. And just a general shot of Montreal here. But uh, yeah, a couple clips there for you guys. A couple tips when you're exposing using the uh, tools on the Atmos monitor. You want to make sure you're always shooting about one or two stops overexposed. Uh, I found on the EVA you can really get this thing about five stops overexposed and still be able to pull everything down. In those examples of the Jeeps driving on the beach, those are about five and a half, six stops above. Uh, one thing I think that a lot of people will get really excited about is looking at the highlight detail. I want to just remind you guys to make sure to watch the shadow detail as well. Uh, the Atomos will give you an HDR slider, which you'll be able to slide and look at that raw signal. You can slide it to the number of stops that you want to expand the image. So I normally expand that to three and a half stops, and I'm going to show you the full spectrum of what you're able to capture when using the monitor. So uh, if any of you guys have questions on that, it's a little tricky concept to uh, grasp using that Atom HDR slider, but you just want to make sure that nothing is hitting on zero and then just take a look at your highlights from there and just view your image and basically what you're seeing on that Atomos monitor when you're using the Atomos HDR slider is basically what you're going to get when you go back to the editing uh, room. So yeah, just to recap a little bit, uh, you're going to get the full 5.7K up to 30 frames a second of RAW when shooting on the EVA 1. Uh, really good post-production flexibility. Better grading of the V-Log footage, uh, what you're really able to do is push all the way to the extremes of that maximum uh, dynamic range of the footage and be able to really get that shadow detail and the highlight detail out of there. Um, improved bit depth and less noise, it gives you a lot more information for uh, and doing any denoising, um, not sure if I mentioned it earlier, the EVA has two ISO sensors, so you can really push the thing up. I've shot around 10,000 ISO without having you know, any issues of having too much noise that a little denoiser can't instantly take care of. And then working seamlessly in Final Cut uh, is another big advantage for me, just being on the road and uh, being able to just put it right into the editing bay and not having to do any crazy, crazy transcoding or anything like that. So a couple more clips for you, a reel that's got a little bit of drone work and uh, some other videos for you guys. Most is shot uh, on the EVA for you.
yeah, a couple uh, clips there for you guys. And yeah, so uh, guys, thank you so much for uh, coming to check it out. If any of you guys have any further questions, feel free to uh, come up and find me or want to talk about any collaborations or questions on ProRes Raw, anything like that. And we'll do a couple of questions and uh, I'll be hanging out. But yeah, that's kind of a general overview of uh, capturing content on the EVA 1 and shooting ProRes Raw. So thanks so much, guys. Definitely uh, greatly appreciate it.